welcome for a new episode of Serial. So for the month of July 2024, like every month, we'll be looking at pictures taken or edited uh, in the previous months. And we directly start with film, um, with a very special film, the film photography project uh, ISO 1.6 um film which is a uh, very low it's named low iso color I and mean, you can find it on the film photography project's uh, uh, online store and those two pictures are taken in sevilla um what's interesting with those low iso uh, films is you can definitely use them with pretty open apertures uh, um, without going into high speeds and you have a very different rendering for example you can see it with the colors and here it's using a half frame format uh pentax f uh, pentax uh, i'm i'm pen f it's a pen ft from olympus um with a 38 millimeter f 1.8 uh, uh lens on it I, I say pentax because pentax came out recently i'm testing it uh, i've been testing it for for quite a while now um came out with a modern half frame camera and so everybody's talking about it i've been using half frame for a very long time and I will be doing soon a video that compares things and, and goes into more detail of this new camera. But anyways, here's that uh, photo of the monastery of uh, Cartuya in Sevilla, um, where the Andalusian Historical Heritage Institute is. And just next to it is the Contemporary Museum, Art Museum. Great place, by the way. Um, here are two pictures of the old town of Sevilla. Uh, I think it's pretty interesting when you discover a city like that using film. You don't spend all your time taking pictures. You just focus on things that really bring you emotions. You try to spend more time enjoying just the real life and the real sight instead of uh, memorizing everything. And here we can see definitely the, the kind of colors that comes out from this film. I actually had done, um, I think a few years back, um, a video about that film, but um, I'm not sure if it's in English and French. It's really been a long time I came out with it. Um, here are two more pictures using the same equipment. Um, Seville is a great city with this uh, really nice river going through. It's a very green city. Um, here in the picture on the left, you can see this uh, monumental building, which is the Torre de Sevilla. It's some kind of spiral going up. Interesting architecture. I'm not sure I like it, but it, it's interesting. Um, and yeah, the city is really filled with trees. At that time of the year, you have flowers everywhere. Um, it's kind of green. Um, so a detail on the right. Uh, and again, with the open aperture of this lens, with this film, worked great. You don't need to put an ND filter in front of your lens. It just goes like that. Um, here are two pictures. Again, a detail uh, of the city inside uh, the architecture on the left or the University of Sevilla on the right. I don't know. I kind of like that picture with the, well, the, the rendering in general of those people, uh, those students probably, and anyways, passerbys. And a pretty slow speed, as you can see this bike going in front. Um, thanks to this uh, low ISO, even so it's really kind of a bright situation, works. Um, still using the same film, same emulsion, uh, same camera. Uh, this is in Iceland. That's one of, the things I, one of the things I really like by loading cameras, film cameras with some films and not using them all, having more than one camera ready, is you kind of travel with them. So you have different moments in your life uh, remembered in, in a very different style. And here that's Sticky Solmer, uh, northwest of Iceland, uh, kind of a touristy village, but a really nice place uh, with those uh, very interesting basalt um, uh, cliffs, uh, just this sort of lava construction that's very typical for Iceland. Um, and all those mini islands. And as you can see, this film is really rendering very weirdly the skies. High contrast situations are kind of interesting. Here again, two pictures. The one on the right, that's still Sticky Solmer with all those islands. Uh, I really like the rendering, kind of doom-like, but the colors render really differently. Um, but on the left, this, uh, this sort of old volcano. These are the plains in between Sticky Solmer and Reykjavik. Um, so you have those large plains and... And well, yeah, very interesting uh, sceneries uh, that that film sort of caught in a very different mood. Um, here, same equipment, same film. That's uh, the picture on the left. That's Seltjarnes. That's the tip of the peninsula where Reykjavik is. 
Um, the dunes covered by vegetation and with those skies, cloudy skies far away. Really like that kind of contrast. And again, the film renders things quite differently and I really like the rendering. The grain's interesting. Or on the right, that's a bus uh, terminal of the BSI in Reykjavik, if you've been to Reykjavik. Um, there's a pizzeria inside this uh, commercial. It's, a, it's basically a chain, but I kind of like this, this photo of a pizza. Anyways, um, I saw taking it with this film was actually kind of interesting because, uh, yeah, it renders pretty well. Um, there's this weird double exposure on top. I'm not sure how I made that, but anyways, still works. Um, here are two details again, same equipment uh, of the west um, neighborhood of Reykjavik, the 107. On the left, that's a, a view from outside of the swimming pool, of the neighborhood swimming pool. Per se, not very interesting, but I thought it was an interesting picture. Um, and on the right, simply a detail <coughs> of one of the houses in this neighborhood. Um, continuing with the same um, film, uh, that's the last the last two pictures using this film. Um, that's north of Reykjavik, um, and basically a golf. Uh, it's a golf uh, surrounding an art center. So on the left, that's kind of a golf cart. I thought was I don't know why interesting. Um, I'm, I was mixed. I had mixed feeling with this picture. Not sure I would put it in, but I, at the end I put it in because I feel like it's kind of, yeah, I don't know, old school golf cart. And on the right, that's um, an artwork in this uh, sim residency place, art space. Uh, that's, a, that's actually a work uh, by Claire Remé. Um It's an artist from Canada. Uh, there's This place is basically a, a residencies between North America and exchanges between North America and Iceland. Um, Korpulstadt, Korpulstadt Dir, I think that's the place. And the golf uh, is the Korpulstadt Völler, uh, Völler. Trying to learn Icelandic, not yet there. Um, here, going to something completely else. Um, same equipment in terms of camera, same Olympus Pen FT 38mm f1.8, but using an Ilfo Color 400 vintage toned film. Um, the interesting thing with Ilford is it's actually kind of owned by um, Harman, which makes all the Ilford black and white films. But these color films were made under license uh, by another company that rebrands a film that's not made by Harman, which is probably Orvo Wolfen NC500. Uh, that's the only thing I could find online. Um, and today we know Harman does Phoenix because Harman, who makes black and white Ilford film, does color film, new color film. We'll see some after. Anyways, I wanted to test this uh, Ilfo Color 400 Vintage Tone. And so that's in Sevilla. It's a 400 ISO film. So I, I won't get the slow exposures I got with the low ISO color film. But um, yeah, two details of the urban architecture of Sevilla. Um, the more brutalist, it's not brutalist, but uh, the more... Uh, common big buildings where people live, kind of quite typical with those palm trees and the vegetation which goes with the south. Um, or here, same camera, same film, same lens. Uh, I thought it was interesting. Again, when I have films in my cameras that stay for a long time, uh, sometimes the seasons changes. Um, the left is in winter, end of winter, and the right sets uh, pretty recently. Um, I think it was last month. So the same place as my garden, uh, winter time, summertime. I think it's interesting to see sometimes on the same roll uh, two moments, very distinct moments uh, in in history, in your history. Obviously, not much more importance uh, in those two pictures, but I thought it was interesting um, and pretty fun. Um, still the same equipment, uh, west uh, neighborhood of Reykjavik, a sunset, um, same day actually, both. Um, on the right, that's a supermarket of this neighborhood. Uh, that was this picture on the right was taken after the picture on the left, I believe. Um, those really very interesting skies and sunsets, uh, always beautiful skies, almost always beautiful skies uh, in in Iceland, except when it's really gray. Uh, here again, it's pretty gray, but still the skies are interesting in my opinion. That's a picture on the left that's behind the opera in Reykjavik, uh, continuing to document uh, the city of Reykjavik and uh, bay uh, end of winter basically um yeah i think the this film gives 
some interesting grain. I'm not sure I like the colors, but anyhow. Um, here, that's north of Reykjavik, uh, the Mosfell Bear uh, district. Uh, you can actually reach this place by bus. It's the terminal, uh, north terminal of the bus 15 line. Might have changed by the time you listen to this video, but I'm not sure it's going to change. But anyways, and um, the Afra Lake, Afravatna Lake uh, on the left, um, and the mountain behind is uh, there's the Afra Fell, uh, it's uh, it's a hike which is really nice, and yeah, you're you take the bus basically 45 minutes or 40 minutes bus, and you're completely out, and there's nothing but nature. Everything's hidden. Um, it's really cool. Um, here, going back to documenting Reykjavik, center of Reykjavik. Two pictures I took with same equipment, same film, which I kind of liked. Um, here, basically confirming what I was saying before, leave a film inside a camera and just use it once in a while. Uh, the Geneva Lake region, the Le Mans Lake. Um, the picture on the left, that's the Mont Blanc. It's far behind. It's almost kind of confused uh, in the white sky, the blue to white sky, but um, from the Bellevue town. And, uh, and on the right, that's still in Bellevue, but we don't really care. Uh, it's a satellite antenna in a, in a bush, which I thought was weird. And I took a picture of it and I kind of liked the rendering. Nothing very phenomenal artistically, uh, I will concede, but uh, I thought it was interesting. Um, going to something completely different, uh, I was talking about Harman Phoenix. That's the Harman Phoenix 200 ISO film. I wanted to test it using flash because it felt like the color rendering and the grain worked pretty well when overexposing and high contrast, at least for me. So using the Olympus XA3 uh, camera, which is a you know a pictogram focusing uh, camera from the 80s, um, which I really kind of enjoy a lot. Um, I took I took this film and and just tried to do a maximum of flash exposures with it. So basically, ninety five percent of the film was was flash. Uh, on the left, that's in Sevilla. Uh, this sad uh, dead bird uh, under a blue door. I thought the picture worked pretty well. Or on the right, um, this tree that's in the center of Reykjavik. You you might know it if you've come as a tourist. I have this this uh, tendency of flash photography with film really making it look like it's in the 80s. Here again, two details of Sevilla. I think it needs some training. That's why I'm practicing quite a bit. Um, but I, I do like the way it renders. It's quite trendy right now. Um, you kind of need a flash which is well situated compared to where your lens is, uh, if you want the, the shadows to be correct. Um, and I think the XA is a pretty good uh, series of cameras which lets you put the flash on the side and when you go portrait, it works pretty well. And I like to do portrait photography if you didn't realize. Um, again, picture on the left, still was flash, but I moved a little bit with a slow exposure, but maybe it did some effect on the wall on front, I'm not sure. And the picture on the right, definitely not flash. Um, I think I've done this picture in, in digital and showed it last month, but it's in the old uh, harbor of Reykjavik. Um, Anyhow, I really like the Phoenix, Harman Phoenix 200 ISO, used at 200 ISO, by the way, the rendering. Um, I don't put much pictures with people usually, but uh, on the right, that's a famous great DJ, probably top <laughs> of Reykjavik, uh, Oli Dori in the Café Barin. And definitely when you use flash, you don't get what, you don't get the visual feeling that you have in real, but you get something else, which is kind of crisp, kind of, weirdly flat but at the same time because of the shadows of the flash i kind of like the aggressiveness of the of the rendering and here i kind of like this composition i don't know why but very interesting also the dj faces a mirror and that lets him see behind really cool place coffee bar in. and on the left that's a picture simply through it's inside a uh, a small uh, protective uh, space. Uh, it's pretty dark. The flash compensates for the light behind. I thought it gave for something interesting. Worked pretty well. Um, let's go to a very different film. That's Ektar 100 using a camera. I'm testing quite a bit these days, a medium format. That's 120 format film. Uh, it's the Fujika GW690. So medium format, really large, 6x9. 
Um, and that's on, on the left, that's the Moss Velbert uh, region. So the pictures we saw before with the horses and, and the small lake. Um, and on the right, that's uh, the Singvelir uh, Park uh, east of um, Reykjavik with the Singvalavatn, the Singvalavatn, Vatlavatn. Um, it's the lake in the middle of that park. I really like the rendering of Hector 100 in terms of color. I think it's a good combination between this camera and um, this film. Um, finally going to digital because we, we did film until now and that's using an Olympus Tough F 2.0 lens on a camera that's supposed to fall everywhere and still survive, go underwater. Um, actually, mine didn't really last underwater. I've had it for a long time, never really used it. I wanted to test it. And sadly, we'll see it in the next pictures. Um, went underwater and didn't really f do what it was supposed to. Anyways, I kind of, I'm not sure I like the rendering of the sensor. It's pretty soft, but it's kind of interesting. Um, still, the lens is pretty good. Nothing exceptional. Um, again, picture on the left. I haven't used this camera for months. And so basically those pictures are from Geneva probably one or two years ago and came. I got them out really recently. Actually, one I took the picture on the right here, which is the Sky Lagoon. It's a really nice place to go for a spa and for a swim. It's thermal bass, beautiful view. It's just almost in the city of Reykjavik. And actually at this occasion, the camera went underwater and kind of pseudo grilled it just destroyed my water came in definitely weirdly i think all the doors were closed i'm not sure what happened but definitely grilled my lcd so the camera still works weirdly but the screen doesn't display anything um here we're going to another digital camera the pentax us1 a camera with interchangeable lenses which i love you if you've followed my series you you know about it that's with the lens zero one it's uh basically a 40 millimeter f1.9 lens, the Jado de Genève in Geneva in two different, very different moments. Um, here it's with the same camera with the 06 lens, which is basically a 7210 f2.8 lens. Um, very different rendering again. Really, a Pentax came out with their half frame with the Pentax 17. Hey, Pentax, you could also innovate and come back with a new QS, well, a new Pentax Q camera. Uh, in the digital format that would be really revolutionary i'm saying i'm sure lots of people would love it because it's starting to age and the grain on this camera is still a bit strong um, but nonetheless it can let you do pictures like this um, here uh, again the pictures before were arriving flying uh, to land in keflavik south of reykjavik and we can see those big fissures in the ground that's Basically, that's the region where the volcano came out last time. And it's actually a result of the land expanding and cracking. So you actually really see it there. And on the right, that's old harbor of Reykjavik with uh, how the sensor renders uh, and how the lens renders when the sky is, the sun is straight into your lens. Uh, going back to the lens, the zero one one lens, the 40 millimeter f1.9, same camera very neutral rendering a great camera overall definitely and still same camera I, I don't like that camera for concerts but you can do some interesting stuff like here that was um uh, basically a bernson uh the main musician the, the singer on the left um, um you also have one of his musicians uh, on this in this concert is uh, hermery gerville which is all on the right uh, the keyboardist great concert and i think the qs1 was this stabilizer in, in body stabilization which is kind of old now but even with 7210 you can get some interesting results uh, even so the grain is very coarse and and things come out uh, kind of rough, uh, it works. And the camera is so small with this lens. It's really still pocketable with the 70 to 210. You can kind of forget about it when it's in your pocket. Um, here, chanting completely, that's the Lake SL2 full frame with the TTR and fisheye 10 millimeter uh, full frame lens, basically a fisheye that goes, that covers the whole surface of the center which gives for a very different rendering than those who don't, where you have the circle in the middle. And I think the, the picture on the left, that's the Kex Port uh, Festival uh, in Kex uh, Hostel. Um, on the right, that's the VD Island. It's a uh, VD is just 
uh, next to Reykjavik, it's five minutes boat. Um, here we see actually Vide Island uh, from Reykjavik, from the, the place where you take the boat, the small boat, the small red boat that goes there in five minutes. It's kind of a protected island, uh, historical site. Very nice. Um, but yeah, this 10 millimeter is interesting, even so it makes lots of deformation. Um, I think the deformation that you can correct in software, which blurs really the periphery, I think it's kind of interesting. It really gives you an, a, an, an idea of the width of, the, of what you're taking a picture of. Maybe not as pretty with the, as with the really preserving uh, lines, straight lines uh, lens, but works well. Not a big fan, but I will use it in the future. And here I was using this uh, time on the VD Island. I'm, I'm testing the Sigma Art uh, DGD and Macro 105mm f2.8 lens. Um, you have lots of details you can take pictures of on this island. This crab shell was interesting. This lens is really brilliant. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure I'm, it's one of my favorite, but uh, Sigma is really doing a very, very high, uh, has a really very high level of, uh, of rendering on those lenses, those art series. And here we can really see it's smooth, it's super precise, it's it's nice focus. I don't use autofocus usually here, I use it, works great. Um, and here you have this artistic, uh, um, those sculptures that are on the island, this is the, the VD Island, um, that dates I think uh, from a few decades. Um, they're all basically at different heights. It's, it's kind of a well done topographic art thing. And just two details. Here are those two pictures, um, actually the last pictures of this series. You can see them from far away. You have actually the real basalt uh, uh, towers, uh, those volcanic uh, uh, elements in the cliffs, and you have those art forms that are placed. An interesting experimental uh, thing to view uh, in terms of art uh, in nature. And, and on the right, that was simply, I like this round stone, which is actually a brick that got rounded by by C, obviously, uh, that I found on that island. And I was testing a little bit of the macro functions, but anyways, I like that picture. And that's how we end this month. So hopefully that was a little bit entertaining. Um, again, don't hesitate to post, uh, to post your questions, your suggestions, comments, whatever. Um, and yeah, catch you next time. <laughs>